Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com, and in this video, we're going to take a few steps to bring some real life to our game. Right now, everything's just kind of boring, blah. Nothing really seems that reactive, and what would really help here is some sound. So we're going to bring some background music and a couple of sound effects to our main scene to kind of help add some, again, life to our game and provide a much better user experience. The first step we're going to take is I'm going to minimize all these windows. And we're going to add a folder in our resources folder. I'm going to right click and say create folder. And I'm going to name this audio. And then with my assets folder open, I'm going to grab all of these sounds. And I'm going to drag them into my audio. They'll go ahead and import. Perfect. And normally there is a preview window here. I'm not 100% sure why it's not showing up. So let me just pull up that assets folder. And we're going to give you a quick sneak peek at what these sound like. This is going to be our button sound. And then our throw sound for when we have our orbs. Our droid cry. our capture scene theme, and then our main world theme. Now that you've gotten a little taste of what's coming, let's actually implement this stuff. First, let's implement the main music for our world scene. We're going to do that by going down to our camera. So expand the location based game object, expand player, and click on camera. And we're going to add a component to our camera. So go down to add component, click that button, and we're going to add an audio source. Once we've got our audio source, we're going to click and drag our main world theme onto the audio clip field. So just drop that there, and we're going to make sure that play on awake is turned on. We'll turn on loop, and we're going to press play and kind of see how this sounds as far as volume goes. Okay, so it's a little overwhelming. So why don't we take the volume down? just a bit. Well, by bit, I mean, maybe let's go with 40%. And let's see about where that puts us. Okay. That's a bit better. Maybe even 30% wouldn't hurt. Yeah, 30% sounds good. So we're going to leave that there. And then if the user wants that to be any quieter, they can adjust that with their own volume. The key is we don't want this to be overwhelming for the user and have them turn it off entirely because that's just bad experience. So now that we're out of gameplay, let's change this to 0.3. So we're updating the volume property to be 30% or 0.3 since it's a float. And with that, we're finished. Because as long as we are in this main world scene, we want that music to be playing. So let's save just to make sure our changes stick. And we're going to move on to our next sound. The next one we'll take care of is part of the UI. When we tap this button, we want that menu, the button sound, to play. How are we going to do that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. We're just going to fix a couple of things in our UI manager for the world scene. So let's expand the scenes folder and make sure that world is expanded. And then I'm going to double click on UI manager to open it in my IDE. The first change that I'm going to make is I'm going to add one more serialized field. Serialized field, private, audio, clip, menu, ETN, sound. And in my awake function, I want to make sure that this isn't null. So assert dot is not null. 
menu btn sound. The next step I'm going to take is I'm going to go down to the very bottom, just above this public void toggle menu, and I'm going to create a new function. I'm going to say public void menu with a capital N, menu button or BTN clicked. And I'm actually going to change toggle menu to private because there's no reason that outside functions should be able to just grab that and change it and change the menu status. So here we're going to manage that and add a sound. But as you've probably already guessed, we're missing something. We need an audio source if we're going to play this clip. So scroll back up real quick, and we're just going to say private audio source audio source for the lowercase a. And then up here above our assertions in the awake function, we're going to say audio source equals get component audio source. And then right here, I'm going to say cert dot is not no audio source. Because we want to make sure that we have an audio source to play from. So back down in the menu button clicked function, we're going to say audio source dot play one shot. And then we're going to grab menu BTN sound. And that'll just play that once. And then we call toggle menu. Perfect. Now let's see if this worked. So let's head back to Unity. And we need to do just a couple of things to set this up before we can use it. Since we're looking for an audio source, we need to make sure that our UI has one. So let's go to the GUI, and I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to add component audio source. Done. And then we're just going to turn off play on awake. Now that we've got our audio source set up, it's time to go and set up this button to make the sound when it actually clicks. Doing that's really easy. We just go and click on the menu button object in the hierarchy. And we scroll all the way down to the bottom where we see this on click and it should say list is empty. We press the plus sign. And then we need to go find the object that has the script that has the function we're looking for. So that Unity knows which one to go fetch. That's simple enough. We're looking for the UI manager that's currently on the GUI object. So we drag that down into this little box. And then we click where it says no function. And then we go to UI manager. And we go up to menu button clicked. Done and done. That's good enough. Oh, and one thing we did forget to do, we need to go back to the GUI to the script and add this menu button sound in. There, perfect. Now let's press play and see if this works. You can clearly hear the background music. Now if we click our menu button, perfect. That's exactly what we were going for. Let's stop playing and we're going to turn off a functionality that's in that function that we were calling because we don't really want the menu to actually show up because we don't have a way to exit it yet. So let's head back to the script by double clicking UI manager under scenes world. For now, let's just comment out this call to toggle menu. And we'll save that script. And we'll come back and take care of that at a later point. Head back to Unity. And we've got one more sound to take care of. When we click on our droid, we want it to do the droid cry. How do you think we're going to implement that? We'll go ahead and implement this by adding it to the droid script. So let's collapse the scenes, expand the models, 
and I'm going to go and double click on Droid. And that'll open up our IDE. And we're going to do something really similar to what we did with our UI manager. We're going to add a serialized field, private, audio clip, prize sound. And then we're going to have a private audio source, audio source. And then we need to implement the awake function so that we can do an assertion and make sure that first off, we've got an audio source and second, we've got an audio clip. So let's say audio source equals get component of type audio source. And then we're going to run a couple assertions and say assert from the unity engine dot assertions dot is not no we're going to say audio source and then assert dot is not no cry sound now we're going to scroll down to this on mouse down function and since at this point the cry is something that we want to implement everywhere that we tap the droid that we know of. We're going to go ahead and just throw it in here to save us from having to repeat it down the line a whole bunch of times when we add functionality to our game. And then we're going to come just above this for each. And we're going to add this, the cry here, just in case for some weird reason, there's more than one manager attached. We want to make sure that it only plays once. So we're just going to say, audio source dot play one shot cry sound perfect now let's head back to unity and we need to go and visit each of our droids to make sure that they've got this set up so for droid number one We'll take our cry sound from our resources and drop it on there. And then for droid number two, we are going to do the same thing for its script. Next, we need to add the audio sources to make sure that they can actually play the sound. So we're just going to add a component here of type audio source and turn off play on awake. And then we'll do the same thing for droid two. So click on it, go to the bottom and click add component audio source and click on the checkbox by play on awake to turn that off. Awesome. Now let's test this one more time and make sure that all of the sounds that we want are there. So press play and we're going to click on our menu. Perfect. And let's click on a droid. Sweet. Now our world scene has a lot more life to it because we've got sounds going on. It looks and feels and now sounds a lot more like a real game. We're one step closer to being able to add the capture scene, which is going to add a lot more functionality to our game and add another exciting component. Great job following along. I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm excited to move on to the next step, and you should be too. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.